exciting. Um, we have almost 10 minutes to finish, and I'm going to ask um, uh, um, uh, Piri, uh, if you are ready, please, um, I think your mic is on. So just ask your question very fast before, uh, be, tell us which country you're listening from, and then we'll come down to Clementine, and we'll see if Stan, Stan still wants to ask a question. If you want to ask a question, please put your hand up. We have one more chat, especially Stan Slurs is a good one. Piri, please go on. Well, good afternoon. You are speaking to Primrose Piri. Hope you're all blessed. Um, my major question is looking at, at this very moment with everything that's happening in the education sectors across Africa, do you still think as teachers, I'm speaking as a parent, that the whole cur curriculums that have been set up by the government for most of our education system, are they all still really relevant or were they ever relevant for our kids to use or for the teachers to share with the kids or there should be a change in the future so that the kids also learn what they need, what is necessary or should there be now maybe new boards that can govern this, especially with people with experience, like hands-on experience like you as teachers who will know how to program like the future curriculum so that they are flexible for any future challenges that we have. Thank you. So what demands or what opportunity for reforming or changing curriculum is uh, COVID presenting to us as an African continent? And of course, uh, Fury is listening in as a parent. Thank you for joining us as a parent, and we'd like to hear our immediate reaction to that. Before I actually push it to any of us, let's also get Clementine's question so that we answer the two questions at the same time. Clementine, uh, please unmute um, your mic and uh, ask your question away. Clementine, are you still there? You still want to ask a question? Okay. It looks like Clementine is perhaps is not ready to ask a question. So let's. Um, Hello. Oh, okay. Um, well, well, ask your question, please. So I have one question. In September, how will we? Rem how will we? How will we mark the work done by, by the students by avoiding corona spreading? Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, that's a very pertinent question. What demands is this bringing to us in terms of uh, engaging with students work in, in terms of actual uh, mapping? Um, given that, um, so Clementine is talking in from uh, Rwanda. And um, in Rwanda, there is uh, the current plan is that schools will open in September. So Clementine is imagining if by that time there will still be coronavirus, as is the case with you guys in Ghana and Africa as well. So, what strategies might you are you guys employing in terms of marking of uh, students' work? So let's go back to Fury and then make comments. So each one of us could we just make quick rounds of. Uh, um, comments in Fury's uh, question and Clementine. It's very, very uh, brief. And if somebody has said what to say, then you can just add in and make sure. But just at the end. Um, can the first question be repeated, please? So the first question was um, curriculum. Does, when you look at what's going on with uh, COVID, does it make you think that part of our curriculum might not be relevant or we might need to revise our curriculum or we might have to find different ways of presenting the curriculum in the African context. Okay, I do, I think we will have to definitely revise curriculum. I think as it stands in South Africa with the current um, curriculum, it's, it's a bit, um, I'd say out of touch for a large majority of the children in the, in the schooling system in the country. It definitely needs revision. Um, I think what I did catch from what uh, uh, Primrose, I think her name is, what she had said in it as well is that, you know, when it comes to the writing and the coming up with curriculum and school boards and things like that, should, you know, the people, I think, on the ground also be involved? I think definitely, I think to make a curriculum 
uh, relevant, you definitely need the people who are going to deliver that cur curriculum to be the ones who are involved in and have a say in what goes into that curriculum. Otherwise, we are stuck with, um, you know, things that are foreign to the kids. And when the things are foreign, then we, you know, get these learning outcomes that are really just atrocious to look at and that, you know, our kids just cannot relate to. So I definitely think the curriculums will have to change. Um, and in terms of assessment, um, I have not ma physically marked anything <laughs> in the past three weeks. I've refused um, you, because what, out of the fear um, and also being like, look, if you can mark it on your own, I think it's time for us to really move there. And I've tried to do that for years. Now I think I've, the push is there to say, please, you know, I don't know how you're going to mark an essay, but you're going to have to figure it out. And I'm going to let you know, I'm going to walk you through the steps to mark your own essays. That's where I am at the moment. But I think assessments, the issue is the, um, those end of term assessments, those uh, what they call the summative assessments, that's I think gonna be the core issue. I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know what we're supposed to do. Um, we've been provided with gloves, but I mean, if I don't know how to use the gloves properly, there's no point in that. So I have not done any marking. I don't know what is going to happen. I will, I guess, cross that bridge when I get to it. Interesting. Um, um, Sandra, do you want to jump in before I go to Rebecca? You have younger kids and uh, perhaps your context is a little different. You're doing a lot of online also. So you're quick to sense about what Primos has asked about curriculum, but also a little, a little supplementary level. Very briefly, we have like five minutes before we can close. Move closer, Sandra. You, oh no, you're actually muted. Okay, uh, I, I personally agree with, with what Yandi has said that yes, the curriculum has to change because you discover uh, that there is now a generational gap and with the, with the vast growth of technology, things need to change. Uh, we cannot run away from that. Uh, it will work at our, for our own benefit and profit to make sure that we stay updated with the way times are changing and make it more accessible and effective for both uh, the conduct lesson as well as online so that all kids still continue to get fair, uh, fair treatment in the educational system, whether advantaged or disadvantaged. But I believe every child deserves the same amount of educational access. Then coming down to what Clementine asked about assessments, personally what we have done, kids do their work, um, they take a photo, they send through my email, that's how I assess, so I go through, now it's more work because I have to go thoroughly through each and every work and uh, respond back to the parents. I have to email back and comment on the errors and line them out. So it's, it's quite a lot of work, but it has to be done because there's no use of just moving and cruising in without addressing what needs to be addressed at an early stage. So that's how we have been doing it, but I'm looking forward to learning more on how to effectively complete that as well. Great, uh, Rebecca, your experience so far, you've only been around for two weeks. I know we had a bit of a conversation about this. But yeah, what's going on? Okay, so with respect to the curriculum, in, in Ghana, we've actually had a change in curriculum. Um, the, that of the primary school was ruled out last September. And the junior and senior high schools were expecting that ours will also be implemented come September. But as it stands, we do not have any information yet to that respect. And in the issue of assessment, we are making use of the oral assessment and um, written exercises, but then we encourage the children to market themselves against our marketing scheme, which we put on the board. Okay, so thank you very much. I think um, it's unfortunate that our fourth panelist, Sake, was not able to uh, join in, but in the preliminary conversations that we had with him, because he teaches primary school, uh, one of the things that we talked about was assessment and the fact that uh, ideally the, 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 health, the health advice is 
people should not touch pepper in this season because uh, um, the virus tends to stay longer on pepper and pepper. And this is a conversation that's going on globally. And so there's a little, it's pushing us more to what Yandi was saying. I think for me, it's a challenge, but it's also an opportunity. It's an opportunity to strengthen self-assessment. But what we are all saying is that then we need to stick together and uh, double click afresh on what self-assessment looks like. What might it look like in terms of English when you're marking essay? What might it look like in terms of mathematics? What demands, how does, how should that change the way I engage? So even if I'm writing on the board or I'm working it out on the board, how differently should I do it? And one of the things I was telling uh, Sahir, and I know we need to have another conversation with this, is that part of, if for example, you have to write the answer on the board for the kids to mark. Remember, good assessment is not about the wrong answer. But good assessment is about identifying where did I go wrong or why did I not get it right. So part of the demand this might present to us as teachers is being as explicit in your thinking as possible. If you're laying it out on the board, you're not skipping steps and imagining they know why you finally decided to multiply and finally decided to put a dot on the eye. So you have to bring your thinking, think aloud as much as possible so that kids can track the thinking through the stages and finally say, uh aha, -huh, at this point, I didn't think like that. So, so we need to have a conversation on this and perhaps in the next session, we'll have the teachers and then also have some of the educators who perhaps have spent more time thinking about some of these things in their research and in their practical exploration and maybe build, bring in somebody from another part of the world and have a collective conversation to add value because it's not just about talking about the problem and learning from one another, but also zeroing on and trying to capacity build. So I think as we are coming to an end to this conversation, the question that um, Primos uh, asked is a key question. As we come back to talk about pedagogy and how teaching might change and what it means to lecture in this particular situation, but still facilitate learning, um, part of what we have to talk about is curriculum, and we have to think about it in terms of if some students will be coming, I mean, if students will be coming for some days and not coming for other days, even if it means they're learning online, or it means they are going to do their textbook work, what does that mean about how we teach or what we focus on teaching during the contact hours and what they do outside? It would have been nice to have conversation around that because I imagine we already grappling with that, but we don't have enough time, but I think that will really suit the next conversation about pedagogy and assessment. So I think the next conversation will be about actual teaching and actual assessment. What are some of the things we could do? We already have seen there are challenges, but there's opportunity also. So um, I don't think, I don't see any other hand. Uh, I think looking at the questions that are here, um, we seem to have responded to Somebody asked where is Sandra coming from. Sandra is from um, South Africa. She's uh, teaching in South Africa, a Zambian teaching from South Africa. Uh, somebody talked about classroom management. I think we've talked about that. So we'll even talk about that when we, in the next session when we think about teaching and assessment in the time of uh, uh, Corona. And uh, yeah, there's quite a bit of uh, students management and how Adolescents especially like hanging out with each other. They want to stay close to one another. How are we handling that? And I think you say we just have to have this extra eye, but most importantly, um, connect with their conscience. Help them see the value and why this is the case. And we know we'll be met with challenges, like some of them say, it's not here. It's all over the world, but it's not in Ghana. So that, that denial, so I think, it's been very interesting speaking and talking as teachers and having the first session of the Mary J. Africa Teacher Talks. I believe uh, this is a conversation that is going to go on. Let's keep our eyes open. We might pull some of you back in the next conversation, but I believe uh, all of us will be back to have another conversation on teaching and assessment in the times of Corona. Now looking at practical ideas, looking at the challenges that have already been presented and trying to start thinking about some of the things that we could do and maybe 
continuously sharing ideas on how well it's working. Before we end, I can see Esdras has their hand up. Um, let's assume he has something to ask. So Esdras, you are going to say almost the final thing. So please unmute and ask your question. Thank you. My name is Esdras. I live in Rwanda. Thank you for this conversation. But I have the problem on the timing of this meeting. If it is possible, you, you can or we can share for us the time for meeting because some of, some of us, we are located in remote, remote area because in, in Rwanda, there is the, an area that I not easy to, to be to have a connection is, is it, if it is possible we can share for us the the, the timetable of this meeting thank you thank you thank you Estra. so the issues of feedback as i say this is going to be our talk and so we have all your emails for those who registered we're going to send um a post zoom kind of uh, questionnaire where you're going to Please feel free to suggest anything and everything that you think could make this better. And especially, we don't want, we want to share as much as possible, not to cut out any teacher. So something like what Esther is saying, if uh, getting to know about the time early is important. So I've just seen a text, uh, one of my teachers saying he has, he has walked all the way to the forest and he finally was able to get his connection and now he was able to join in. So and those are the realities also that our students are actually interposing. So that's really very key uh, feedback. Uh, but just to say there will be opportunity new forms to uh, put uh, feedback. Um, we really have to close. I'm seeing hands now starting to come up. But if it's about feedback, please, please don't worry. We will have uh, time to have feedback. Um, but because of time and because we want to respect time, and other commitments that our panelists might be having and we might be having on a Saturday such as this. Um, today was a holiday in Rwanda, so first of all, I want to really thank the teachers in Rwanda who were able to join because it's a national holiday. We technically should be celebrating our Liberation Day, but we decided to still join in. I want to salute um, all of us from the different parts of Africa. Um, um, we had East Africa most represented, but we also had West Africa, we had South Africa, we had North, and we had Central. So in, in terms of regions, the whole continent was actually covered, and this is really exciting. I will send you emails, and you actually confirm if um, you want to um, continue with participating in this. Uh, let me just share this with uh, um, um, I see the result. Maybe not. Um, but that's that's the way it is. Uh, sorry, somebody's calling me. Yeah. So I just want to say uh, on behalf of everybody, especially the first team that is the first panel, you are almost like guinea pigs, but we did very well. We had a little bit of back and forth conversation before today, so you've invested so much time in this. And we just met through technology. So I, I really want to say um, thank you very much for investing your time, for being open to share your experiences. Yandi, our prayers are with you. We thank you for being a soldier that went into school, contracted COVID, fought it, and now you're ready to go back. So again, that is... Um, 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 that is something to tell us that, well, we might go, we might get it, God willing, we will be able to fight it and go back. We have to face it on. And just to correct, Sandra is not from Zambia, she's from Zimbabwe, but she is uh, teaching uh, almost for over 10 years now in South Africa. Um, but yeah, it almost feels like we don't want to leave one another, but I think this is really exciting that we can connect across Africa. I believe we are setting something that will grow into a big tree. And we want more teachers to be involved, even the rural teachers who might not be having the technology. So we are really thinking around that and comments like what Estras has said is really, really important. 
please pass the word around. I will eventually post this on a um, on YouTube page and I will send that communication so that those who are not able to come in, please ask them to subscribe and to listen to you. Um, those of us on Facebook, we also have, um, we also have uh, a teacher's page. Let me just check this call. I don't know if I'm sure. Okay, I thought it was a teacher who thought they should just call in with their question. We should give those opportunities. So yeah, so there's a, a, a Facebook page, the Africa's Teachers page, where we have been streaming this live. And uh, I want to thank all those who are streaming live on Facebook. Unfortunately, I was not able to toggle both here and Facebook to see what comments are there. I am learning, I am learning, I am learning. And I've heard it this way before. And so thank you very much for learning alongside with me. All the best as you go back to school on Monday, Rebecca, um, Sandra, and Yandi, and all of us. Monday is a holiday in Rwanda. Uh, but we are, I hope we've learned quite a bit that we can go back. And I hope also Yandi, Rebecca, and Sandra will learn something that you can go back to, to your classroom. Last word, Yandi, one minute, uh, half a minute. Um, I don't have much to say, but thank you to everyone who tuned in and supported this. I hope we do lots and lots more in the future. Thank you. Sandra? Sandra, your, your, your mic is still uh, muted. Sandra, your last words? Sandra? Okay, let's go to... Okay. Hello. Oh, okay. I just want to say, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who tuned in uh, to, today. I would love to encourage all the uh, African teachers from, from across Africa to please come forward and let's have a way to providing the best and professional excellence in the education system across Africa. So looking forward to hearing from a lot of teachers and sharing your experience. Please go and like the page, Africa Teachers, share your experience as you open up so that we all learn from each other. I believe together we can and we will conquer this. Thank you, Sandra. Really inspiring. Rebecca. Yeah, so I also want to say that we are grateful to all who tuned in to listen to the discussion. And we encourage them to bring their feedback so that it will give us um, more room to improve on subsequent ones. Thank you. So with those many remarks, again, for me, Dr. Herino Tinomena, it's my pleasure. I am privileged and I'm humbled that we could come together and launch and have the first session of the Mary J. Africa Teacher Talk. Looking forward to another conversation on actually as we have said, pedagogy and assessment in the times of corona in the African classrooms. And we'll be looking towards borrowing from some of the things that I've been saying today, having some teachers still with us next time, but also bringing in some educators and maybe some people from other continents that we could, we could draw lessons from. But we want to have African solutions midwife and backed by Africa's teachers and educators. Thank you, signing out. Thank you very much, everybody. See you next time. Keep those comments coming. Let's continue the conversation on the different pages. Thank you very much. And bye bye. Say hi to Sahel. We missed him, but we hope to have him next time. I'll talk to you. I actually, I'll talk to you, but we'll see. <laughs> We we'll try and bring the men. This is not a girl's hangout. We try. <laughs> our man was not able to come on board. So next time we'll work very hard to ensure we have two, so that if one drops off, we can be assured of having <laughs> male face on this talk. So that was unfortunate, but we we have laid the ground. We will build on from here. Thank you very much, Yandi and Sandra and Rebecca. Have a good time. You say hi to your students and your families. We did talk about what happens when you go back home, but we'll talk about that next time. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye.